Hello there and welcome to today's workshop, You Can Write a Book. Some simple steps to help get you started today. In fact, by the time you've completed watching this workshop, you'll be able to sit down and really put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and begin the work of writing your book. I want to encourage you first as we get started with a little bit of a story about how I started on my own journey. I've always wanted to be a writer. I wanted to create something that would encourage people or would entertain people. In fact, I was always a writer of stories and of poems and of songs all through my life. And a couple of years ago, about four years ago now, I was really in a place where I was ready to get started. I was ready to write that book, but I didn't know how to get started. And of course, I an opportunity for me to watch some training came alongside uh, of me and I watched that and the first speaker was a man named Jeff Goins and he shared his story about how a friend of his asked him said hey Jeff what would you do if you could do anything and Jeff told his friend I would be a writer but I know that that will never happen for me and his friend gave him some incredible advice that I want to share with you today. His friend said, hey, Jeff, you already are a writer. You just have to start being one. And so being a writer is all about what you tell yourself and about what you do with what you tell yourself. So today I hope to give you some encouragement. But the first thing that I could tell you today is from this point forward, call yourself a writer. All of the technical part of it, we'll get to that, but it all begins with your mindset. What I want you to do for yourself is really invest the next 45 minutes or so. Turn off any other browsers, put your phone away, close the door to wherever you are, and just really put yourself in a learning space. Give yourself and your heart an opportunity to get this information so that you can begin the journey that caused you to come to this workshop today. So let's get started. I want to share with you that this simple strategy will help you do a few different things. And you know, it depends on where you are and what you want to do. If you are in a, a personal development or a ministry place, it may be that you just want to help spread your message about your beliefs, what you believe about faith or religion or mindset or personal development. You may also, with that, it's not an either or, you may also want to attract an abundance of clients to what you do or an abundance of listeners to your message. Writing a book can help you do that. In fact, it's one of the most powerful powerful tools you can use and the truth is there's only a difference between you and uh, some and me is that I've written a book and maybe you haven't so don't get yourself stuck into this mindset that you can't write a book because I promise you that today I'm going to show you that you can so today you're in the right place if you want to write a book, but you've got a few questions. And maybe those questions are something like, you don't know where to start, what topic, what style. It's just all a jumble in your mind. You may have even done a lot of investigation and you've heard a lot of different answers out there, but you just don't know where to start. Or maybe it's the technical side of things that has you stumped. You don't know whether you should use a word processing software, you should write, use a writing software, or if you should use Kindle or Nook or what you should do. Maybe you, you're, all those technicals just paralyze you and you don't know where to start. You don't know how to decide on a title or a cover and how do you even get started on that? Who, who decides what's a good cover and what's a good title? You wonder if anyone would even read your book. You know you've got a lot to say and a lot to put out in front of people, but would anyone even care that you wrote one? 
And then you're kind of questioning whether you should publish or try to get a book deal of your own. You don't, you don't know. Can you be a real writer if someone like Random House doesn't publish your book? And then you, maybe you have some questions about, is it expensive to write and edit and publish a book? Maybe you have a friend that wrote a book and did self-publishing in one way, and it cost them thousands of dollars. And you know that you don't want to invest that kind of money in a book that might not even sell. So let's kind of get started in that. But first, I want to tell you just a little bit about myself. And some of you know me, some of you don't, but I, my name is Donna Woolham, and I am a business creator. I am an unrepentant entrepreneur is what I tell people. And I even was talking to my grandchildren the other day and said, you know, I just really love working for myself. I am an author. I'm a speaker. I've done lots of public speaking and public training in, from very small venues to a few people in a room all the way to hundreds in a room. And I, one of my books, one of my business books, Design Your Culture, Empower Your Team, was one of the most downloaded books on Amazon. So I'm really proud to say that my books have impacted people as well. I've been married 39 years to my wonderful husband, Richard, and we have a story that would build books on all on its own. And about three years ago, because of health issues with Richard and life challenges for us, I recreated my entire career and business model. I went from working for other people as a representative to having a business of my own. And so I'm proud to be able to say that I was able to just take a stand for what I believe and turn that into income for our household. And I believe some transformational opportunities for others. In fact, for the people who work with me, as I am their coach, they have said some really incredible and wonderful things to me. And one of those things is that I helped people to get an insight into what their truest, deepest desires were and to help them then to begin to give themselves permission to walk that path. And that I have been able to really help people get clarity and help them to get direction in the path that they want to take and help people be free to be the person that God created them to be because this is what I believe. I believe that you have, are destined for a purpose and it is a purpose that God has put inside of you and he wants you to succeed. And I want to be your advocate, someone who stands beside you and helps you get to the place you were meant to be. Writing a book is just one of those ways that you can do that. Whenever you write a book, it will open doors for you to see new opportunities, to open opportunities for you that you might not ever have thought could happen for you. They will increase your authority. That means that when people, when you introduce yourself and you say, I'm Susie Watkins and I am the author of How to Transform Your World in 30 Seconds or Less. Don't we wish somebody would write that book? But that gives you authority. I am an author. Just being able to say that increases your authority. It proclaims your expert status in your field or your area of interest. It distinguishes you, sets you apart from other entrepreneurs or people in your space who haven't written a book. And it helps you grow your following. And perhaps there are people who are interested in your services or interested in your products, but they're just not quite ready to invest yet. And it turns them into passionate fans of yours who believe in you, who help promote you. It helps define you and helps you become known for your exact specialty and your passion. And of course, it helps you attract new clients, helps you reach people you might not be able to reach any other way. We're going to look at a couple of, about three different case studies and they are in different areas and different realms. So if you are in the entrepreneur space, you may have heard of Carrie Wilkerson. She is really a trailblazer in all of this. And for those of us who've been in business for a while, 
Carrie really is a person that we can look at and say, yeah, she's, she's the one I want to follow because she titled herself from the very beginning, the barefoot executive. She's a work from home entrepreneur and really opened up so many opportunities for people. She brands herself there as the barefoot executive executive, and she helps people entrepreneurs take their business to the next level to achieve financial freedom and it helps people as a business coach and as a business speaker it helps people prepare themselves to be her ideal client it gets them on the right path toward working with her and it gives those who read her books the opportunity to taste and see what her personality, her ethics, her strategies, and what working with her looks like. Carrie has been able to define her audience, and your book will help you reach the right people for your message or service. And the great news is if you, with a little bit of the right promotion and some, uh, some tools and tips and techniques, you can get bestseller status just like Carrie has been able to do. And it really remains one of the strongest social validation badges you can earn best-selling author of. That really kind of perks people's ears up and helps them then to think, hmm, you know, if they're a best-selling author, they must have something valuable to say. Another gal, Jenny Finnig, is a coach and she uses her books in order to really reach her ideal audience as well. And it's a first step or an invitation to work with her. And she does that by having people buy her book and work through it. Then in the next step, they can join her program, her eight week challenge, Live Your Dream. Then the next step would be that they enroll in her Get Gutsy Coach Training School and she offers a free sample chapter of her book to make that investment easier. So people really get an opportunity to read a little bit about her, how she sounds, what it looks like to work with her. And that book is kind of her business card or her promotional brochure to help people get in the right space to work with her. Now, Jenny is really, really smart and she uses her book to set herself apart, and she does that very intentionally. Her title is Keyword Rich, and what this means is that when people are searching for a particular title or they're searching for a different way to find information, they're going to type in keywords. Now, you may not realize that your Google search does that, but if you type in how to make bread, then anyone who has keywords, bread, or make bread or bake bread or recipes for bread, they're going to come up in your search because it's a key word that they're searching. So she does that. She is a, she creates this sacred fearless guide for finding your soul's calling and living your dream. Her title is Get Gutsy. It's punchy. It's short. It's memorable. And she's known as the Get Gutsy Gal. One of my all-time favorites is Brendan Burchard, and I discovered Brendan Burchard through probably just some a promotion, a book promotion he was doing, and he uses his books to express his passion and his calling, and no matter what book he's writing, his message is consistent. It's consistent throughout his books. It's consistent throughout his speaking. It's consistent throughout his personal appearances, and Believe me, this guy knows some people. I mean, you can see he's right there, been on Oprah. He works with Oprah. He builds the skills and intent of his readers in a step-by-step -step way in everything he does so that they are ready to join his high-level performance programs. And he is one of the most watched, quoted, and followed personal development trainers in the world. And he started out, you can see that little purple book, the Student's Leadership Guide, that was his first book, just a little brochure type book to get his heart about leadership out there in the world. He's a New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today number one best-selling author, and he is known as one of the top 25 most influential leaders in personal growth and achievement. And he did that 
by having a clear, concise message and always following his passion. You can do the same thing. You can make sure that you're reaching the right audience. You can set yourself apart from others and you can follow your passion in your book and in your promotion. Because a book helps build your audience. It helps qualify the perfect action-taking individuals and clients. You gain credibility and brand yourself. It sets you apart as an expert. It converts readers into clients and followers. It generates these wonderful promotional opportunities. We're gonna talk about those some more too and helps you attract more leads to your business. So whether you put your book on your website or whether you put it on Amazon or whether you put it through any of the hundreds of other book promotion sites, there are opportunities there for you to reach people that you can't do just on your own one at a time. There's one final reason for you to write your book besides all of those others about building opportunities for for all of that authority and influence and getting your message out. The most important reason is for yourself because if you do it properly, it can help you clarify your single most unique specialty and calling. It helps you declutter your business of everything that doesn't aid you in declaring that calling. It helps you zero in on the most important way you help your audience. And it reignites your own passion and bolsters your self-confidence. As you're helping other people, you help yourself. I mean, it really comes down to the truth is physician, heal yourself. And the teacher is always the first one who learns the lesson. And so you may be thinking, but what if I'm not a writer? So I want you to think about this. You have conversations with people all the time and help them. You help people zero in on their issues. Whatever it is that, that is your gift, your calling, your specialty, your talent, your skills, your abilities. When you talk about those, you help people know more about them and you make recommendations on what to do about that. Let's say, for instance, you are a seamstress, and for someone like me, I have a little bit of knowledge, but I'm going to be helping someone create something beautiful, and I need a little bit of help, so where do I go? I go to the experts. I go to the people who can tell me, hey, this is what you do first. You already ask questions to help people find the answers that they need, and if you are already in business or if you're in ministry or if you're already teaching something about what you're doing, then you help and provide your clients with tools and instructions that make that process easier. It's just a matter of getting it out of your head, out of your heart and into print. So here's some, some quick tips before we really begin to dig down inside of step-by-steps. I've promised you some step-by-steps, and but just as a beginning, when you're getting ready to write, just write like you normally speak. Don't try to be someone you're not. People want you. And if writing or typing isn't your thing, then just get out a recorder. Get your phone out and start recording. Just talk into the recorder. Put your thoughts out there and then use that recording. You either hire a transcriptionist to do that or you use some sort of speech to text software like Dragon Naturally Speaking. You So get that recording out there. Or maybe one of the great things you can do is just interview 10 of your top peers in whatever field you're in. 10 people that you know that your audience would enjoy hearing their truth or their story. This is a great way for you to do something quickly and easily and to not feel the pressure of having to do something in a particular way. Just be yourself and write it like you speak. Don't try to edit it. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Uh, record your book and then hire somebody or use software to translate it or transcribe it for you or do an interview of, top, of the top 10 people in your field. Your book becomes not only a calling card for you, but it becomes passive income. And simply passive income means that you're not out there having to do the work personally. 
if you're a coach or a consultant or a therapist or someone who does body work, maybe in essential oils, then uh, it gives you an opportunity to teach people about your subject without you having to be there in front of them. It also becomes a promotional tool. It's something you can offer as a speaker. It gives you the opportunity to really build your business in significant ways. It helps you then keep your message in front of others and becomes a tool that you can use in joint venture offerings. And that simply means maybe four or five, maybe 10 of you want to reach the same offering uh, um, audience. You have the same audience that you want to reach and you can use your book as a way to be promoted in that summit type event or you can sell that at meetings that you go to you can have it available and we're going to talk about a lot a lot a lot of different ways that you can do that but just keep in mind it becomes a hands-on resource that keeps your message so are you really ready now for step one step two step three and step four let's get started so step one brainstorm and create a strong outline. Now, a lot of people will recommend that you come up with your book topic and your title first. And if that works for you, that's great. Go ahead and do that. But it's better to start with a general idea. For me, it works to have a general idea for the book and then write an outline and you can brainstorm components and steps and what you want to add to that. And if you do that in, a, in an easy way, just, just look at this example here. It's just break it up into sections. So for instance, putting this workshop together, it's, the topic is writing a book. So why should you write a book? Section one and section two, how do you write a book? Not much information there, right? But it's a place to get started. And then once you have those sections, they can become your chapter headings and it becomes a lot easier then to put the individual subtopics. So there's an introduction, the benefits and case studies, and then in section two, the step-by-step -step process and the resources and the conclusion. There are a lot of ways that you can easily and simply begin to outline your book right now with just all of the ideas that you have in your mind. Just get them into the outline. They give you confidence that you have a direction to go in. They help you highlight the most important information that you want to share and keep you on track because it is easy to start off on a tangent and get off a topic. And before you know it, you're writing something that doesn't have anything to do with what you wanted to say. Now, that doesn't mean you toss that away. It just means that it's not appropriate for this particular book or work that you're working on. Put that over to the side. That's probably another book all on its own. It helps you be able to assess whether or not what you're saying is important to the whole book. When you have veered off topic, it may be that you get into a creative space and you start writing and you go, wow, this is really, really powerful and it needs to go into a different section or a category. And it helps you produce a really tight, cohesive, and focused finished product. Now, don't worry about it if you weren't great in English school and don't know how to do a, a proper outline, so to speak. You know, one of the things that really helped me was just getting a piece of poster board and writing my ideas on sticky notes and then putting those sticky notes in different places. I was able to move them around and really have an idea of how I wanted the story to flow. I use this process for almost everything that I do because I'm a visual person and I need to be able to see my work in front of me. Some people aren't don't work that way. You're going to work a lot better if you have it in a file or you create a system where you always have an outline in the same way. Whatever you do, just get the information out in a way that makes sense to you so that you can keep track of the the structure that you want for your work. It helps you refine your focus and topic and it helps you ask yourself questions like, is this the most important thing I can share with my readers? 
do I feel passionately about this? And if you don't feel passionately about it, then the question to ask is, will it help the reader, even if it's just routine to you? Will they care about that particular element? And then do you even care about that? You want to look for the aspect or the angle of the topic you are most passionate about. And then this brainstorm helps you tighten up your outline to reflect and talk about your single most important angle. So let's talk about that. What is the difference between an angle and a topic? So let's just say your topic is very general and your angle is very specific. It's laser focused. So when we think back to Jenny Finnig, her book is identifies, her, her general topic is identifying what you most passionately want to do in life and making money with it. That is huge. That is so broad. But she took it down into an angle so that it could become its own narrow identity or even an entity all on its own. And her angle is finding your soul's calling. That helps you put a name and an identity to what you're dealing with. And your outline helps you identify that. And you'll begin to see clues and, and some steps that you might not even know are inside of you. Step two, this is one of the big questions. How do you name your book? How do you create that name that just bounces off the cover of the book and makes people want to buy it? Well, it's not as tough as you might think. One simple formula is to think about the handle or the identity that you and your process or signature is going to be known by and then include your ideal client's main search words in the subtitle. For instance, Mandy Hale has a website called thesinglewoman.net and she brands herself, herself and her site as The Single Woman. So you see here, her book is The Single Woman's Sassy Survival Guide, Letting Go and Moving On. So you take what you want people to know, your system, your signature system, and we're going to talk a lot about that and how to decide what that is, your signature system, your signature book, and how to put that where it makes sense to you and to others. Another approach is to think about what your audience, the people that you want to reach, what is their most crucial question. So for instance, Pen Penelope's book here is, the question is, when am I going to be happy? It's short, it's easy to remember, it's punchy. When am I going to be happy? And then she promises an answer in the title, how to break the emotional bad habits that make you miserable. So there's the promise right there. Step number three, how to write your book, tighten and tweak your outline. So you've got an idea, you've, you've created this outline, but it's full of all kinds of ideas. How do you get it tightened up and ready to go? Well, first of all, you take out any subtopics that don't directly fulfill the promise or advance the fulfilling of the promise that you want to give in the book. So for instance, if you are in the health and nutrition space and you want to write a book about the 10 best foods and how they help your body shed weight. Well, if you have a subtopic in there that doesn't have anything to do with that, you know, you can take that out. And you can take out any subtopics that don't directly deal with the angle that you want to promote. So you're able to keep things tight, keep things cohesive, keep things focused. Like I said, it doesn't mean that those other ideas and those other subtopics aren't important. They're just not appropriate for the work that you're wanting to do right here and right now. Then for each chapter, you want to think about some stories. You want to humanize the story and make people be able to say, oh, wow, that's me. Or wow, I get that. That's just like I am. So you want to include some stories and some illustrations that give more weight to the, to the story. 
and you see this, you can see this in books that you read all the time. It's books that you love, that you read, that you come to over and over again. There are those points, those stories that help cement the point into your mind. For example, think about how Jesus told parables to help cement the point of what he was trying to teach. And write down those examples or stories, but you don't want to write the whole thing down in your outline. You just want to write something that would remind yourself. So maybe you have a friend, Sandy, who was going to buy a house, but she just didn't really get to it and she didn't make the offer and the house sold out from under her. And maybe you help people fight procrastination. So Sandy and the house deal would be enough to remind you. Now, my husband calls these dog notes and I have a funny little story to tell you about. We were in school together, in ministry school together, and when I take notes, boy, I mean, I've got lots and lots of information in those notes. I just am practically rewriting what I'm hearing, but that's my style of taking notes. So the there was an illustration about how a dog a particular kind of dog, a wonderful, beautiful golden retriever, and how the, his master used that dog to help say, you know, it's the whole Lassie story. And I've got all of these notes written out, but Richard wrote dog. He gets the same information from writing dog that I do in writing a paragraph, so we call those dog notes. So you want to write as much information as you can to make sure that you remember the story that you want to tell. Step number four, which is scheduling your writing time. Now, this is so critical. And people will say, well, I'm going to wait to write until inspiration strikes me. And I, I wish I could remember the name of the author, but he says, inspiration strikes me every day at nine o'clock when I sit down in front of my computer. You can't wait for inspiration to strike you before you write because you will procrastinate. So you need to schedule daily writing time into your schedule. You know, whether that's in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, if it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, if it's two hours, put the time in there. And it's really important to you. You'll think, well, I don't know what I'm going to write. You know, I, I might have writer's block, but I want to ask you, do you ha ever have speaker's block? Do you ever just open your mouth and nothing comes out? Well, this is a tip that I can give you that will really, really help you. Say, for instance, you're going to schedule every morning from 9 to 10, you're going to work on your book, but you sit down in front of your computer or that piece of paper, and you don't have any idea what to write. A good tip for you, a good practice for you is to just start writing. Just start writing whatever's in your head. Even if you write, I don't know what I'm going to write today, but I know I'm supposed to write, so I'm just going to sit here and write whatever falls into my head. Hey, did you know it's raining outside today? I wonder why it's raining outside. You get the idea? You just begin to write because what happens is your mind, your brain will get into the habit of knowing when I sit in the chair at 9 a.m., it's time to write. So whatever your schedule is, schedule that time and write. Write something. Maybe a specific time isn't going to work for you, so you, you don't have a lot of flexibility. What you want to do then is maybe schedule that you're going to write so many words per day. So if it's easy for you to type and it's, or write and it's easy for you to put a lot of words on the page, maybe you want to write 2,000 words a day. Maybe you want your book to be 100,000 words. So you know that you, if you want to write your book in 30 days, you're going to divide 100,000 divided by however many days that you want to spend writing the book, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and that will tell you how many book words you need to write a day. To get your book finished. So you can do it by time and just not worry about how many words come out. You're going to write 9 to 10 and then you're done or you're going to write 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 words a day. It's your choice. Just put it in your schedule. Also in your writing your book, you want to make time that, that is set aside for editing. And this is really important as well. 
even if you're going to self edit or if you're going to hire an, a professional editor to help you with the book, this is a, an important piece that you want to put in there. And especially think about that you're going to need at least a couple of weeks. If you're working on a deadline and you want, you're going to write a book that you want to be released around Christmas time, then it's important for you to know that you need time to get the book edited. You need time to put the, the book up where it can be sold. So you don't want to wait until December 1st to write your book, to have it ready for Christmas. You want to think about, I need to be writing in September or October to get that book ready and out into the Christmas market. So step number five, write your copy. You know, you can have an outline. You can come up with a title for your book. You can set aside the time, but you actually have to do the work, right? Because it doesn't matter how many ideas if you have, you have if you don't actually get them onto the page. So this is where you can copy and paste. That's called transposing the section of the outline that you're writing about right then and plug it into your word processing in Microsoft Word file and just remove all those extra little prompts about things that you want to take out. And you can write right under that outline headline. You can use Microsoft Word. I highly recommend Scrivener or some other software writing program. They are very inexpensive all the way to very expensive, but you can actually start with your word processing software and it helps keep your work all together. You can write on a sheet of paper or on a typewriter, but you just need to know you'll have to have a way to get that information into digital format. So just think about that. It's great to write just on a yellow legal pad if that's what you love to do or in a notebook, but you're gonna have to get it into digital format somehow. So you'll either have to hire someone to type that in for you, transcribe it for you, or do it yourself. So for me, I really love being able to just like shortcut things, which is why I love Scrivener. And I'll uh, chat some more about that at another time. The most important tip that I have for you as you're writing is don't try to edit it as you go. Now, can I just raise my hand right here and say, this is one of the things I struggle with the most. I want to go back and edit it while I'm writing it. And it just, it just doesn't work well to do that. So resist the temptation to go back and change where things are and how things look and how things sound until you finish the book. You want to get all of it out. You want to just pour it out of yourself and not edit yourself because it will slow down your creativity. It will slow down your process and it'll be harder for you to get the book out if you do that. You want in this time of writing, you want your voice to shine through. And if you keep editing, you'll get lost in the perfectionism of trying to get it right. Step six is all about the editing process. And remember I said, don't do it while you're writing, but there is a process that you want to do. So the best thing to do is do a preliminary read through and spell check, and then send your manuscript to a reliable experienced editor who specializes in your type of book and yes that's important and you may you want to if you're going to hire an editor you want to interview them you want to get their credentials you want to make sure that you're getting someone who really knows about your specialty so if you're writing a fiction book you want a fiction editor if you're writing a non-fiction book someone who specializes in nonfiction. If you're writing a biography, an autobiography, you want someone who specializes in that area. You can edit it yourself, and there are some tips that I wanna give you about that. First of all, of course, you want to run that spell check. You want to run that through your system. You wanna do a quick read through and only correct the most glaring, obvious, errors in the book and then put the book away at least for a week because as you've been writing it you've become blind to things you are overlooking different areas you have fallen in love with your story and it would be it's your it's your baby it's your child it's your creation and cutting 
out a chapter will be horrible for you. But if you put it away from for a while, then it's easier for you to go back and make the edits that you need to make. But even if you do that, you want to make sure that when you read it through, you want to highlight anything that doesn't make sense and just take it out. If you stumble, then you, you may wonder what's going on. So read it out loud. In fact, I recommend that you read the whole thing out loud because you're going to pick up words that you might not see just reading. And there's this area where we want to correct all of the grammar until it sounds like an academic journal. Listen, if you don't talk like that, you don't want to write like that. Because when people see you in person, they'll go, wow, that doesn't sound like her at all. Now you want it, you want to be yourself, but you, and, but you want to be professional. So this is really important in the editing phase when you're hiring an editor, help them to know what you're looking for that you want corrected. If it's punctuation and if it's spelling only, or if it really doesn't sound like you want to sound, help them to know what you want changed. And don't, you know, don't spend a lot of time trying to fix it right now. Just, if it doesn't make sense, pull it out, take it off to the side, delete it, and know that probably the work that you're doing can do without it if it just doesn't make sense. And know this, if it puts you to sleep while you're rereading it, it's obviously going to do that for your reader. So rewrite it, tighten it up, get rid of all the flowery phrases. People don't read like that typically, unless you are writing a, a, a descriptive book and fiction, that kind of thing. Shorten up your sentences and use bullet points or lots of white space. And this would be if you're writing nonfiction, which I'm, I'm guessing that most of you who are uh, watching this today, that's where you'd be is in the nonfiction space. But if you are writing fiction, then there's a few things that you would change here. You want more descriptive language. Even if you are taking out those flowery phrases and shortening the sentences, make sure that you use descriptive words. Help people to take hold of what you're saying in a descriptive way, but it doesn't have to be flowery. And even if you don't use a professional editor, if you're self-publishing, share it with some other people and let them read it. Maybe a long-time client or your virtual assistant. With my books, I have had three to four different people, different areas of life, different people that I know reading that, and they all bring something different to the table. So it really has helped me have better books. They see things I don't see and they see things that others don't see. So put that in as part of your editing step. Begin to think, who could I have read this for me? Then how do you promote and use your books? Well, let's talk about that. The questions that you want to ask yourself is, does it need to be a print book or can it just be an ebook? And how will it help your ideal client? Do you plan to use it as a prime guest for guest spots or to fuel public speaking? Are you going to do any public speaking? Do you have any desire for that at all? Are you going to use it as a pre-qualifying first step like some of our case studies do? to for potential clients who maybe you're not quite ready for your products and who can't afford it right now. Do you plan to share your book for free? Are you going to just give a sample chapter for free? What kind of price do you want to set? How many other ways can you think to use your book? And are you committed to promoting your book and pushing it to Amazon bestseller list? Do you have the time and the will to put in the research for the topic? Or are you going to need to pay someone else to research the topic for you? Will you edit or will someone else edit and format the book? I mean, you can hire anybody to do anything for you. So those are some questions that you want to ask yourself. And it's important, a way that you can save time is to use a blueprint 
for your business promotion. And so it would be a promote a blueprint that helps with focus or include your signature book, allow you to concentrate on putting your heart and your soul and wisdom into the book's content. And this blueprint would help you to know the insider tips, the tricks, the secrets that would help you get to the top of the Amazon bestseller list. And it would even help you know whether or not you want to go the Kindle route or the Nook route. So a blueprint helps you get all of that figured out. There are also some other things that whenever you're putting your book together for promotion is where do you want to place your calls to action and where should they be in the book? And this is especially important if you're using your book to promote the other part of your business. So for instance, say that you have a product that you promote and your book is really an opportunity for you to share your expertise about what you do. And when you talk about a particular product that you sell, then within your book, as you're teaching a skill, where do you put your links for people to go to your website or go to your store or to send you an email? What makes book covers work as a powerful marketing tool and how to stay away from covers that will kill the sales that you want to make. How can you use a free book promotion websites to get your book out there, run you up to the top of the list so that in the hundreds of thousands of authors on Amazon, how do you get yourself up and out of that group so that people pay attention to you? And how and when are you going to use those free promotion days that Kindle offers you? And so you want a blueprint, a course or a challenge is going to give you the whole package. So it's going to identify your readers, how to come up with a topic, how to plan it, the mechanics of all of that, how to advertise, how to promote, and how to do your book launch. And of course, in all of that, I've, I've given you as much as I absolutely can within this last 45 minutes or so. But I do want to let you know about my own course my own blueprint, which is the Write Your Book in 30 Day Book Writing Boot Camp. And I want to share with you in just a couple of, for, for just a couple of minutes about this boot camp and how it can help you take everything that you've just learned because I want you, I mean, if, if you want to, you can take what I've just shared with you and you can really begin to get started and you can do the research and you can find out how to do all of these things in a cohesive focused way. You can do the research on your own and figure it out. Hey, that's what I did. But if you want some extra help and if you know that you want a system that will really keep you focused and keep you going, my 30 day write your book, book writing bootcamp can help you do that. So, I want to tell you a little bit about what it is, and I'm just going to take a few minutes to share that. It is a four module self directed boot camp that sets you firmly on the path to starting and completing your book, including action plans and exercises for each module that makes sure you don't have any trouble getting started and taking that focused action. It helps you. Brainstorm, plan, and write your signature book. And it's focused mainly on the writing process, but it also includes a promotion action plan to take you right through the steps to an effective book launch. So if that's something that you're looking for, let's talk about what it covers in detail. In these four modules, module one helps you to get the ideas, the book ideas that work, and how to do the research. Module two helps you create your powerful signature book outline. Module number three plans your, helps you plan your book chapters for the absolute maximum clarity and power. And module number four helps you write, edit, and format your book like a pro. So let's just break this down more concisely. In module number one, you're going to learn how to find all your viable book topics and types so you can make the best decision on creating your signature book. You know, there are a lot of different ways. And so this module is going to help you come up with seven solid ideas. It's going to help you know which book type and topic is your best and what your readers will like the best. 
how to make sure that you enjoy writing your book as much as your readers enjoy reading it, how to ma accurately make sure that you know how much research time it's going to take and what that's going to involve, how to help you find reliable resource options and sources, both online and off, if you decide that you want to do an interview book or find people to interview for your book, it's going to help you increase the chances of them saying a yes and uncover some of the secrets of best-selling authors. In module number two, we're going to really talk about creating your powerful signature book outline. And you have received today an overview of that. And you could start right there and really get started. But in module two, we go much, much deeper into that subject. So it helps you align your book with your business or your message to help you create a powerful, memorable, and professional outline so that you can more easily write your book. And to make sure that you have a strong stance, that you're not wavering back and forth between ideas. It's really going to help you stay on target, stay out of a tangent field and bunny rabbit chasing so that you can make sure that you're getting the information out there. It's going to help you know the essential sections that every book should have and what you need to get rid of, what you need to ignore and what you can't ignore. How to clarify your message and find your voice and to take that signature book outline one giant step, one Olympic step further. In module number three, planning your book chapters for the absolute maximum clarity and power and learn how to make your chapters really sing and tell the story and draw your reader through your book. How to keep your readers engaged going from page to page and chapter to chapter. How to create that flow and drive within your reader to keep reading. How to isolate ideas and principles and actions and make them more powerful within your book. Where to put those call to actions. What you must have within your first chapter and your hook if you want people to keep reading and why your last chapter is so critical so that your readers will be happy that they read your book, be satisfied, and know that you really answered their question, but that also will keep them wanting more from you. Because after all, don't you have a lot of different things you would like to write about? And then module number four, how to write, edit, and format your book like a pro. You want to produce a powerful, professionally presented book, but you don't want to have a lot of heartache and headache about that. So how to fight your, find your writing rhythm, how to create that perfect schedule and sticking to the point, get rid of all the clutter, what you should never ever do when preparing your book, how to edit like a pro, formatting that book and staying in love with your book and making others love it too, which are all really important aspects. So what you get with Write Your Book 30 Day Book Boot Camp is unlimited lifetime access to the Write Your Book 30 Day Book Writing Boot Camp. And it's a 30 day book writing boot camp because it's broken down into four modules. So you could take a module per week and thus have your book ready to go within 30 days. It includes video training for each module, action plans, worksheets, checklists, and resource guides for each and every module. And all on its own, this easily has a value of $4.97. So when you're thinking about everything that's included in the bootcamp itself, it's $4.97. Uh, it would be valued at $497, but you're also going to get some more bonuses. And doesn't it make sense that you would need things that would help you along that journey? So to get you started today is the book Brainstorming Blueprint. So 10 simple steps from idea to promotion with a $45 value in that. How to plan, write, and publish your book in 30 days or less. This is a workbook that you get that includes worksheets and checklists. Now, this helps you to just really tick the boxes 
and gives you insider secrets on what to include in different styles of books. Maybe you want to do an interview book or a how-to book or 100 tips on book. This helps you know what you need to include in those types of books and how to make sure they're in your book. And that's another $97 value. Then after you publish your book, don't you want to have a book signing event and really get out there and help people to know that you've written a book? So even if you've self-published, this will help you to create and host your own Rockstar book signing event. And it has eight of the must-do steps. And it has all the checklists and worksheets to help you get it done the right way. And helps you know step-by-step, piece-by-piece, what you need to have that. And that's another $97 value. Additionally, I've set up an expert interview with a professional book editor, and that will be available for you to listen to so that you can get those priceless insider secrets and information. This is a woman who is an expert in editing books, and she is one of the best, and she will be able to share with you all of this, these things that a professional book editor looks for. You will also, along with this course, receive a one-year complimentary membership to Skill School. And inside of Skill School are numerous courses that are packed with even more training to help you increase your influence, your authority, and your income. There are trainings in there on how to set up email campaigns, on how to outsource the work that you're doing so that you have more time to do the things that you love. There are resources in there on how to identify your heart code and know who God has made you to be and how to express that. Now, the membership for a year is a $300 value, but the training inside is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. So that is a complimentary membership for you for one year in there which means that as soon as you register for this course, the 30-day Write Your Book Boot Camp, all of that other information is going to be yours to use and to learn from. And additionally, you're going to have questions about what to do next and what, how to apply what you're learning. So as you are working through this training, you will receive personal email support from me as you work through it. And that is a $500 value for you to be able to ask me your questions and learn what you need to do next. All of these are great bonuses, but the first 10 to enroll will also get a fully customizable media kit so that you can amp up your publicity campaign so that you'll have a speaker sheet, you'll have a book sheet, You'll know how to create the bios that people ask for you if you're doing podcast interviews or if you are doing a guest blog post for someone or you're going to an event where you're going to speak and it's a speaker introduction. All of those things will be included for you for the first 10 to enroll in the Write Your Book Boot Camp and that is easily a $40 value if not more. So that's all great and good. But I want you to know that you have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If for any reason within the next 30 days of taking this course, it doesn't meet your expectation. If it doesn't help you get your book started and finished, all you have to do is email me and I will send you a refund. Now, the initial value, and I want to say the initial value of these resources and training is well over $1,500 because it... It would be hard to say what is possible when you write your book and the level of influence it will give you and the amount of leads that it will give you for your business and how it will help you to reach an audience. So I can only say that the initial value of these resources and training, the 30-day write your book boot camp, the blueprints, the rock star event, the how to write your book in 30 days and get it edited and published and ready to go, the other information that's inside Skill School and my personal one-on-one support, 
well over $1,500, but you don't have to pay that. You don't even have to pay the $497 that I mentioned. Because for now, for today, your investment's just $247. Think about that. For just $247, you'll be able to get started to live out your dream, your passion, your vision of being a writer, of being an author. You can write your book and you can make an impact in the world around you. You can make a difference. We are waiting for your story. People are waiting to hear from you. I know that you may have some questions, so if you do, I just want you to email me at Donna at DonnaWoolham.com. But you can see the link there on my website, DonnaWoolham.com. Write your book. I hope that you'll go there right now and click on the link and get registered so that you can get started writing your book. Your bonus resources are already there waiting for you. They're your pre-work. They're the work you want to do and need to do to get yourself ready to move through the four modules. So they're there waiting for you. Skill School is there waiting for you. Isn't it time for you to get your story out into the world and to write your book? I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Go there now, DonnaWoolham.com. Write your book.